Today on the GSD Show, in this GSD Raw interview, I'm here with Eric Charles Russell, the author of The Art of Selling Memberships. He's one of the best salespeople I've met in the space, and we're going to be covering sales, sales mastery, and pretty much everything that has to do with sales in a fitness studio. Gym owners and fitness entrepreneurs, are you doing all you can to manage leads, improve retention, and build meaningful relationships with your clients? If not, UpLaunch can help. Built by gym owners for gym owners, they've proven battle-tested software and marketing campaigns that will save you time and increase revenue so you can focus on the important things in life. Find out whether CRM is trusted by gym owners worldwide. Schedule a free demo at useuplaunch.com today. Are you ready to transform your gym or studio into a membership selling machine? Well, there's only one way to do it and that is through ongoing membership sales training. The Membership Sales Academy is the no sweat way to train yourself and your staff in a proven membership selling system that is used by thousands of fitness businesses all over the world with amazing results. And speaking of amazing, I would like to make you an amazing offer on this ongoing training through the Membership Sales Academy. Go to sellmorefitnessmemberships.com and check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the GSD Show. And today we are in a GSD Raw interview with the author of The Art of Selling Memberships, Mr. Eric Charles Russell. Eric, man, welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Man, this is exciting. Um, You spoke on stage at GSDCon two years in a row. And, uh, you know, last... GSD Raw episode. We actually had Brittany Welcon who also spoke there. And um, the reason that we do GSD Raws is to be able to have a raw interview, raw conversation with somebody that is just really, really good at one particular thing, like specialist. And you could just take us down this like step by step process on how to really do this thing like a specialist would, how to be better. Awesome. Is that good? Yeah, sounds great. So obviously, I've gone through your book, but also we, we all just shot like three hours worth of sales training videos with you and I was learning stuff along the way which is great it's always great when a salesperson can learn some sales stuff yeah yeah. so that was good so what I really liked is um, I I was looking at possibly changing the order of some of your trainings and you're like no don't touch them because this is the order And, and and I didn't get what you meant at first and you're like this is how it goes like sequentially in the system of when you're making a sale and so I'd like to just go down that order with you yeah is that good well sequence is important and I, and I kind of relate it to a combination lock. Okay. If, you know, the little dialed things that we have in high school, the locker lockers, right? You turn it one way for one number, you turn it back two, way, two more times for another number and back away for the other number. If right. you do the right numbers, but they're out of order, yeah. the lock doesn't open. Right, right. Right? And this sales process is very similar. You can do the right things and say the right things and ask the right questions, but when we do them out of sequence, it actually can hurt our effectiveness. Yeah. And what we're doing is we're taking the prospect on a journey to a membership. Okay. And along the way, we want to eliminate objections and, and things that are going to hold them back. And so we do it in a, in, a, in a sequence because they are different people in different parts of it. Yeah. A I brand like new it. prospect is completely different than someone that's sitting in front of you. Of course. Of and course. someone who's tried your program. Right, that prospect has got to be handled a different way, and so that's why the sequence is is important. I love it, and you know the reason, main reason I was really excited to have you not just speak at GSD Con and contribute to the Learning Center and be on the show, is because we have members at Loud Rumor that use you, and yeah. that that are like saying they're they're getting results um, that are like far beyond what their expectations were. I think one black guy was closing like thirty percent, now he's closing seventy yeah. percent of his leads, and it's just insane. And it's awesome to it's, hear those It's wild, stories. too, because sometimes those numbers are almost hard to believe. Yeah. Like, how can somebody close 70%? Mm-hmm. Like, I have a client in Oklahoma. She, uh, she's a salesperson, uh, who, a client of a, you know, she works for a client, right? She's a right. salesperson for a client. And he hired her from Sonic. You know, the, the <laughs> fast food the place. The fast food place. Right? And from lead to close, 74%. Wow. This, and... and it, it, it's because of the sequence. It's because I've been in this business as a salesperson, right? It's it's what I wanted to be good at. It sounds crazy, but that's the thing that I started at. And so 
I wanted to be good at it. I didn't want. I, well, I didn't come in as a technician like I'm a personal trainer learning how to sell. Right. I came in as a salesperson. Wanted to learn how to sell well, fitness. Right, because I was working for my, my adopted father, and I cannot disappoint, man. What were you doing there? Selling. Yeah, but what were you selling? Memberships. Oh, okay. He had a gym. So, oh, got it, got it. So, I didn't know if before you were selling fitness, you were still doing sales elsewhere. No, no, no. So I started selling memberships for him because he's got like, it. oh, man, Eric, you, you, you're good at talking to people. You're a good salesman. Do, do membership sales. I'll pay you a commission, and you can make a lot of money. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be the easiest job ever. Like, a lot of us get into it and we think, oh, this is going to be so easy because everybody wants this. Everybody needs it. But you were in sales before, right? Maybe not in fitness, but you were se- you sold before? No, I was Never 15. Sold. You were 15 years old? Yeah. And you already said this is going to be the easiest job ever. Yeah, I was like, this is cake. Now, now, were you right or was it because you no, were 15? <laughs> I was completely wrong. <laughs> and it was very difficult. Okay. And as you... Um, as you start to train people and, and become a coach at teaching sales, you start to really realize how difficult it is because they don't have the system that you have. See, when I was training employees, they never went through that. They never went through that tough spot of sounding like they're do, doing their hardball sales tactics right. or high pressure or feeling awkward because they got a process to follow. And all they got to do is follow it. So you start to work with clients and you start to see really how difficult it is. And they'll hire somebody who has sales experience and they come from a traditional background or come from some other background and they don't realize how unique our sales is and how unique our prospects are. We're, we've got to be with them. We've got to be around them. We've got to um, create a relationship from the jump. Right. And so we've got to handle that a certain way. And they're coming to us with things that, that they might die over right. and we can help with and they'll still say I need to think about it right right like how crazy is that you know and right. so it it's a difficult sales process when you don't specifically handle the issues that come up in it mm-hmm. so you got to be in the business to really get what I'm talking about with the sales process well you know it's funny you talk about out of order one of the things I think we sometimes you and I speak the same language but in different yeah. like dialects or something yeah, like yeah. that right and so Sometimes I'll say, you know, I, I had one guy lost a sale. He's like, I did what you told me to do with the overcoming the objection. It didn't work. And I said, well, what'd you do before? Right. You know, and we started talking and I said, well, here's the deal. You lost that sale on the one yard line. Mm-hmm. You didn't lose that sale in the end, in the red zone. You lost that sale way back over here. Because right. there's things that you're always talking to subconscious more than you're talking to the conscious. You know, yeah. if like you ever met that one person, you're just like, I don't know what it is. It just he doesn't rub me the wrong way. You can't even articulate. Somebody will be like, why? I, I don't know. I just, I don't get a good feeling from him. Yeah. Something that he or she did rubbed you the wrong way. And just like sometimes you get a great feeling from someone and just something, the way they looked at you, something they speak to your subconscious sometimes. And that's really what's making a lot of decisions. Yeah, you know? it is. I mean, you, you, you're deciding on emotional things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I want to look like, what I want to feel like, they're emotional. Right. I have nothing to do with logic. Right. And, and you know, the other example is a great uh, book called Starts With Why, Simon Sinek. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if uh, he mentioned in that book or in his other book, uh, Leaders Eat Last, but one thing he said is if you ever look, sometimes everything on paper looks right and everything makes all the sense in the world, but it doesn't feel right, so you don't do it. Mm-hmm. And vice versa, sometimes everything you know, looks like wrong and you shouldn't do it. And every one of your friends saying, don't do it, it doesn't make sense, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it, and you do it anyway because it feels right. So I th- the brain really just makes a logic of it to make sure you're not in too much danger, mm-hmm. but in reality, your gut's gonna make this choice. Right, you right. Know? So let's dive in and let's go sequentially in the order that you would like to, to go of, okay, the people listening, they're here to learn. They tapped into this raw interview to be able to learn how to do this process better from mm-hmm. you. So where do we start? So we start with the person being interested, the prospect, Okay. right? We're in a business where people raise their hand saying, hey, I wanna hear from you. Mm-hmm. I want you to help me. Don't screw it up. And that could be as simple as filling out a Facebook ad, right? Just saying, yeah, I'll take your free week. That, they're walking in, they meet you at a booth. Right. You are walking around town, what do you do for a living? Right, right. Everybody's a prospect, right? right but right. somehow they raised their hand and said, hey, I'm interested. And I'm interested because I wanna lose weight, I wanna get in shape, Okay. right? So we've gotta understand the mentality first and foremost of that person. They are afraid to come in. It's now been proven by studies that gym intimidation is a real thing. Mm-hmm. So 
we don't want to talk about how great our program is at this point. Even though it is, even though it's the, the best thing they're ever going to experience. Because what happens is, with somebody who's intimidated, and now we tell them that they're going to now embark on this great journey with this great program, they get more intimidated. Right, right. This is... They're not on your level yet. Yeah, the, it's, it's, it's playing into their worst nightmare, their right. biggest fear, like, oh my God. I'm going to show up and I'm going to be the one who's not in shape and the one who doesn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I hear it all the time with clients where they'll say, sometimes prospects tell me that they think they need to get in shape before they even come see me. Yeah. And I laugh and they're, and because I've heard it and I hear it all the time. And that has to do with you literally telling the prospect about your program and now they're more scared and they feel like they're not worthy. Mm -hmm. So they don't show up and they go to some other place that isn't even gonna help them, yep, right? Yep. So the first part is understanding that prospect mindset. We've gotta get them to overcome apprehension. We've gotta get them to feel comfortable about being a beginner mm -hmm. and not be afraid to show up. Has nothing to do with how our facility looks, smells, has nothing to do with our certifications. It has to do with me saying, hey Mike, it's okay if you're a beginner. You have nothing to worry about, man and you go, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's step one, right? You, you start to, now, this person's going, this is amazing, and you just said nothing about your program. You just helped with a fear. Right, you, you, you crushed one obstacle. Right, the second one has to do with not fitting in be, based on their goal. Right. Right, so your goal is to lose weight and get in shape. You know what they're thinking? They're going to show up, and they're going to be the only fat person that's ever walked through your door. Yeah, they think everyone's going to look like in a magazine. Oh, they're going to be ripped. They're going to be toned. Uh -huh. I'm going to show up with 20 pounds of flab on me, and everybody's going to stop working out, turn, point at me, and start laughing. Right. That's literally like, you know, right. they take it to the extreme. Right. So when they say they want to lose 20 to 30 pounds, you know what, Mike? That's the number one reason people come to us. So you're going to fit right in with everybody else. Right. I let them know that, hey, look, that's why people come to us in the first place, and you're going to fit in. So now they're seeing people like in look their like image, right. not as these like super workout freakazoids that are, yeah. are in shape, right? right? And that's what we want. We want them, now they're feeling comfortable, right? The second, and, or the third thing is, they're, they're afraid of being sold something. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, they're afraid of salespeople. Oh, you're, you only want me to come in for free because you're going to put me in a corner and sell me something. Right. So we got to explain to them why we do the free. Right. Or why we do the trial or why we do whatever it is. And it's for two reasons. One, so you can try it out and see if you like it without any obligation to continue. Mm -hmm. Without any obligation to continue. Wait, so you're not going to sell me anything? I didn't say that. Right. But I help you feel comfortable about showing up and not being sold something. Right, right, right. Because my sales process is going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask if I can sell you something, which is totally mind-blowing to a lot of clients, right? <laughs> right, right? And then the second reason, so I can show you a program that works and that makes sense, right? Then I book an appointment and we're good to go. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally destroying all fear and apprehension on the front end so that they feel secure about actually showing up. Okay. Okay? Show up rates are not going down when you do this. They're going up. Mm -hmm. What's happening is people are answering their phone, people aren't... Uh, um, gym owners, membership salespeople aren't handling the real issues up front. So show up rates are now low or, right, right. or going down because... Because they think people care about how awesome my studio and gym is. Right. When they can't even, like they're so focused on themselves. They're here not because they're looking for an awesome studio. They're here because they're not happy with something that's going on inside. Right. And that was never even addressed. Right. The only people who care how awesome you are are your members. Mm -hmm. They're not a member yet. No. They're scared. Right. Once they decide to become a member, now they're going to brag about how awesome you are because logic now comes in, emotion's over. Right. Logic right. justifies the purchase. Right. Logic now says, I got to tell everybody I made a great decision by joining Joe's gym over here. Right. Right? So members care about that. But we treat prospects the same way we would treat members. Mm -hmm. Let me tell them how awesome we are. And instead of that helping, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to address that. And once we address that, they show up at a higher rate. Well, and that's for anything, right? There's just diff different stages. And you, when you get a new client in, you don't treat that new client as, as somebody that's been working out with you for three years. The new client, I mean, you're going to show them how to do every exercise first before they get on and do it because, you know, you got to show them the form, everything else. 
Whereas the other one, you're going to talk to them in a very different language. Hey, do this, do this, do this, do this, and then we're going to circuit through, and they just do it perfect form. Everyone goes in different stages. Your employees too, a training employee versus an actual onboard or a manager. A prospect and a, and a member, they're not only in two different experience levels, but they're in two different cares. Like mm -hmm. they, This one does not care about you. The other one does. Right. This one cares only about themselves, and they're emotionally in pain. These people are in pain, but they at least feel like they've got a solution. Right, right. right. And, and you've got you've to understand that. Right, and right. so you've got to handle that sequence correctly. So what's the next thing? So, okay, we got that. We've, we take the call. Then you said we book an appointment. Is the next step like how you book it, the things you say to confirm it and all that? Yeah, I mean, we, one thing that's important to understand is that you are a leader. You're the expert. And, you, and they're asking you to lead them. So we want to make sure that once we... Once we're, we've dealt with some of their fears and their apprehensions, we've now built some rapport and some confidence mm -hmm. that, that you can listen to me, that I'm going to help you. So now it's time to direct them. And when it comes to booking an appointment, I don't ask them if they can come in. I ask them, do you work days or nights? Why do you ask that? Well, because I want to know if they have a job, first of all, right? <laughs> <laughs> they got to be able to pay for it if right. they want to do it. And the other thing, it helps me with schedule. Okay. Right. So if they work night or days, I work days. Okay, great. When do you get done with work? I get done work at four. Okay, awesome. So here's what I got. I got tonight at four thirty, or I got tomorrow at four thirty. Which mm -hmm. one works best for you? Which? Right, right. Not can you make it? Not do you want to come in? Which one works best? Mm -hmm. I know you want to come in, or you wouldn't be a damn lead. Right. You want to come we in? We wouldn't be on this call. You, you wouldn't. You'd be. Spent two yeah. seconds with me. Right, right. So I already know you want to come in. So which one do you want? Right. Tonight or tomorrow? And I want to do it immediately. I don't want to wait a week. Right. I don't want to, the longer you wait, the more likely life's going to get in the way and they're not going to show up. Right. Well, and, and also they're afraid, like you said. And fear multiplied by time is killer. Right. Right. Like if I'm afraid of something, the, the longer, if I'm afraid to buy a house, the longer I wait to buy a house, the more I think about how much I'm afraid of it. Right. If I make the decision right there, it, it's, it's when I'm going to be my least afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, but go ahead. It's like, you know what? It, another good example is cold calls. Mm -hmm. Everyone's afraid. It's new salespeople afraid of picking up that phone. Right. You wait 10 more minutes, you're going to be even more afraid, dude. Yeah. Do it right now. Let's get it done. Just call somebody. Watch what happens. Mm -hmm. It's oh, never it's as bad, bad as you think. Yeah, it's yeah, never as bad. It's, it's never as bad, right? Well, because like you said, the guy that comes in or the guy that calls and thinks that everyone's in six-pack shape and he's the only one that's going to be out of shape, you always project the worst out of a fear. Yeah. You, if, you, if you're afraid to go on a date, you are already thinking everything's good. You're going to get mustard on your shirt. Right. You're going to stutter. You're going to talk too much. An ex-boyfriend's going to call her, come in, <laughs> swoop her off her feet in the middle of the date. Like everything that you could imagine yeah, is yeah. going to go wrong. Right. Um, and, but this is not true. And that's exactly what's going through the mind of your prospect. That's why it's super important to eliminate that stuff initially. Right. Because once you do, it's done. Right. I'm not scared anymore. Right. Once, once you turn on the light, it's not dark anymore. The boogeyman's not there. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Right? right. And it's the same idea. You just got rid of the boogeyman for them. So okay. it's not necessarily going to come back. What happens is if we wait too long, they lose interest. The reason that was that was uh, making them want to do it becomes less of a reason. Life gets in the way, as I said. You know, oh, I popped my tire and now I don't have any money and this is going to be too much. I, there's all kinds of things that happen. Mm. So they're the most interested right now. We want them in now. Right. Well, let's do it right now. Can we do one? Can we do a yeah. role play? Yeah. All right, ready? So phone rings, I'll be the lead. Would you, you want me to be a, a caller or do you want to be a form lead? Doesn't matter. Either like way, you're calling we're, me we're or I'm go, calling you. It's going to go to the same thing. Okay. So I'll, I'll call you because this is the situation that happens the most. Okay, so I filled out right? a form. I'm a lead. I saw your ad on Facebook or something like that. You know yep. that because you see the lead source. You called me. Phone rings. Hello? Hi, Mike? Yes. Hi, Mike. It's Eric over at Name Fitness. I got your request for information. And um, I wanted to give you some inf that information on our programs. Quick question for you. Have you ever trained before or is this something totally brand new to you? Um, yeah, I've worked out in the past before. Okay, great. Have you ever done a program similar to l what we offer here? I don't think so, no. Okay, well, so that you, under you know, we're 
completely beginner friendly. Okay. So you have nothing to worry about in, in terms of not trying our program before. So, cool. so that's all good. You didn't have to have experience. Um, what, is, what are you looking to get out of it? What, what's, what are you trying to achieve by, by getting involved in a program? Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I was in really great shape about 10 years ago, had a few kids. I feel like I put on an extra like 10, 15 pounds since then. It's gone all to, to all the wrong spots and uh, I need to get back to where I know I can be. Sure, okay. Well, great. Look, 10 to 15 pounds, mm -hmm. we can help with that. And it's actually the number one reason people come to us. Okay. So you're gonna fit right in with, with everybody else here. Okay. Now, let me first off, just so you know, like I feel better. Yeah, you're right. Like I'm, it's I'm, weird, I'm, right? I'm really putting myself in the state of the prospect. But yeah, go ahead, keep yeah, going. Yeah, and, and this is what you sometimes uh, you'll hear this on the phone. <sighs> yeah, yeah, cool. Like you just alleviated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. And if it's in person, them. you see the shoulders go down. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. The okay. Walk well, let's keep right? going though, okay. so we don't lose the track. So okay, okay. cool. So, so the free week. Let me explain how the program works. You get a free week, and the reason why we do that, there's two reasons. Mm -hmm. Reason number one is so that you can actually try the program out and see if you like it, see if it's fun for you without any, any obligation to continue, okay? okay? The other reason is it allows us to kind of figure out what program makes the most sense for you and, and make the best recommendation. Does that okay. sound awesome? Yeah, it sounds good, but it is a free trial, right? Right, right. Okay. You, get, you get that to, again, like I said, so that you, you get a chance to really see if you like it. Okay. And, and, and there's no obligation to continue from that free week at okay. all. So all right, it really right. is an opportunity for you to evaluate and see if it, it, it works for you. And, and, and ultimately, it's gotta be fun. Right, right, of course. Any program that you're gonna do over an extended period of time, it's gotta be fun. And that's, okay. And, and that's what we wanna see if that makes sense. Yep. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, awesome. So do you work days, nights? What, what do you got going on? Yeah, I work during the day. Okay, when do you get done work typically? Usually around 5, 5.30. 5, 5.30, okay, great. Well, I have tonight at 6.15, Okay. Or I have tomorrow at 6.15. Which one works best for you? i probably do tonight, 6.15. Okay. When you say probably, because I want to I make sure that um, I put you in the spot, and I'm going to uh, write it down, and I want to make sure that you can actually do that so that I'm not taking a spot mm -hmm. from somebody else that can. Yeah, so when you I say probably, you can I definitely can def do yeah, it? Yeah, okay, sometimes it's semantics. I just want to make sure we're yeah. on the same page. Yep. Okay, awesome. You can definitely do tonight? Yep. Excellent. Now, when you come in, uh, just bring regular workout clothes, okay. right? A water bottle, things along those lines. I'm going to text you the address so that you have it, and you can just tap it, and you'll be right to our front door. Perfect. And when you get to that, that front door, off, off role play, I love. I'm going to text you the address so you have, it and you can just click on it and go from there. Yeah, that's smart. Okay, go. Well, listen, I learned a lot of what I um, I teach. I learned the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> which means I learned by it costing me money. <laughs> and, and rather than continuing to do it, which is definition yeah. of insanity, right. you're fixing those little errors right. along the way. Okay. So what happened was I had an appointment. I will never, ever forget this. Because not only did I not get paid, it went to a competitor. What happened was I booked the appointment, no show. And I'm like, what the heck? So I follow up. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, it's Eric. Yeah, what's happening? Dude, I missed you the other day. What do you mean? I, I signed up. I signed up, didn't even you, come for free. You, I signed, you up. signed up? Yeah, he signed up with my competitor because oh. he went there thinking it was my appointment oh. and, and actually bought a membership. And I know they suck at selling, so this would have been cake, you yeah. know? Oh. And I'm like, okay, text going out with the address <laughs> from now on. And, and all of my salespeople know. That's what happens, Got okay? It. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so, so you anyway. send a text with the address. Right. Now, it's going to give you the directions right to our front door. Now, what's going to happen when you arrive at that front door? I'm going to meet you there. Okay. I'm going to give you a quick tour of, of the facility. I'm going to introduce you to some members. You're going to meet your coach. We're also going to chat a little bit more about your goals and really um, try, to, try to narrow down some options so that we can uh, get a program that, that makes sense for you. You get a chance to try the workout, like I said and then we'll go from there. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, great. One last thing, Mike, before I, I let you go. Who are you talking about with this? Who's, who's a, a friend of yours that you've had a conversation with, or maybe it's a significant other? Anybody you've had a conversation with about accomplishing this goal? Yeah, I mean, I've told my wife I really, you know, did want to get back into fitness, and she agrees, and she's kind of feeling the same way, too. Okay, awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to bring your wife with you? Does she want to work out with you? Um, I could ask her. Why don't you ask her, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you down as a plus one. Okay. And if she can't make it, no big deal. You still show up, 
-hmm. But if she can, I've I've got you down as a plus one. What's your wife's name, by the way? Uh, Marjan. Okay, Marjan. So I'll put Mike and Marjan um, down. If she can't make it, like I said, don't worry about it. Okay. You still got yours. You're good to go. But bring her in if you want, and and uh, I'd be great it'd be great to meet her. And we'll sounds go from good. There. Awesome. You got it. All right. I'll see you tonight at six fifteen. See you tonight six fifteen. Okay. Good deal. Cool. You know what's interesting? Like, and I noticed this right at the tail end. I I'm so trained because I do so so much sales training, and a lot of it's over the phone. Mm-hmm. I can't make eye contact with you when I know it's a phone. I know. Role I know. Play. <laughs> I, I notice at the end, I'm like, shit. I'm not even looking at the guy. <laughs> so, You're sorry. trying to get in the zone, and I'm well, like, he's trying to feel like how it feels. Yeah. Well, because. When I'm doing role play in person, I, I have to look because that's yeah. part of the game. Right? right. But when I'm doing phone role play, I, I'm trained to look down or away because I right. can't use your body language or facial expressions yeah, yeah. as an advantage because I won't have that advantage in the real game. Right. So I, I noticed that at the end, I'm like, oh shit, I, I should probably pay attention. This, yeah. rec- this is all being filmed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So let's move That's, on. by the way, what you should do in a role play. Yeah. If you're on the phone, like literally, let me turn yeah. around. Don't look at the person. Yeah, like, yeah. Literally turn around. Get. Yeah. Away from it. It's kind of yeah. hard to turn around when you get a Yeah, we, we face back to back when we do it. And yeah. we even put our hands like this and everything. Do the same thing. Yeah. You notice when I was doing I was yeah. catching myself doing it. I'm like, oh, I was probably going to look weird. So, <laughs> stop doing that. so, okay, so now that you've got me in, what's the next step? Do I get a confirmation text, email, call, anything like that? Because I'm coming in yes. tonight at 6 15 and it's uh, 4 20 right now. That confirmation is going to have the confirmation time, all that good stuff, and then the address to get to me. If it's tomorrow, I'm going to conf- I'm going to send them the, the uh, address and I'm going to confirm it tomorrow as well. As well, so both day, both yes. days. Okay, yes. cool. So now, what's the next step? Like, what what what's the next step in this sequence that I should know? Okay, so now they show up and okay. we've got to do the pre-workout interview. Okay. This is where we're handling the objections. Okay. If you wait till the end to handle an objection, see, this is traditional sales. What do we do? We present features and benefits. Mm-hmm. We give them options to buy. They say whatever objection they have, we try to overcome. Mm -hmm. Well, in our business, we know what the objections are going to be. We know what they are. Mm -hmm. You can go to any gym owner, any membership salesperson, and say, what are the objections that people give you? They will tell you, can't get here. I got to check the bus schedule. Mm -hmm. I got to look at my schedule at work. Don't know if I can make it at those times. I got to talk to my wife. Right. Right. I got to talk to somebody. I gotta talk to my dog. What, who, there's always somebody they gotta talk to, right? Right. Or you know what? I, I I don't know if I can commit. Right. Those are the four main ones. Now, if you're saying money's one, that's because you don't have your process dialed in. Mm-hmm. Money's not an objection. Money's never the objection. No, 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 no. It's a circumstance if it's true. Yeah. And you can't create money for people. Right. But it's it's typically not an objection when you have your sales process dialed in. Right. So we've got to answer those four objections in our pre-workout interview. And when we answer them, they don't come back to bite us on the end. And the other huge benefit of it is when we are at the end, if there's any hesitation, it's been narrowed down. So now we can actually address the real issue and not think schedule is the real issue. How many times has, has a gym owner out there heard I got to check my schedule. Call mm-hmm. me back in a couple days. Right, right, right. All the time. Does it take two days to check a freaking schedule? No. No, because it's usually on our phone in our pocket. Right. So it's a delay tactic. It's something that they're hesitating about, right? And, and here's something that I want to point out to gym owners, membership salespeople. People don't hesitate because they don't want what you have. People don't hesitate because you're selling them something that they don't need. They're hesitating in our business. They're hesitating because of something that's inside. I feel I'm not gonna stick with it. I feel I can't do the workouts. I feel like I'm gonna quit. Those, it's internal stuff. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily wanna tell you that. They'll tell you, let me check my schedule because they don't have the confidence to move forward because they failed in the past. Right. Right? And so it's- It's an easy out. It's an easy out, but it's also saving them from feeling like a failure again. Right, right, right. But here's the bottom line. If they leave without a membership, they're still going to feel like a failure. Mm-hmm. They're still going to feel like they, they did commit one more to one more thing. And now. it's harder for them on the next one, even harder than this one to actually commit because they are they're getting better at, at not committing. Right. They're practicing that. And they're adding it to the list and pretty soon that list becomes, yep. I've tried everything. Yep, yep. 
You haven't tried everything. Right. You haven't even tried this. Yeah, you literally nothing. <laughs> you did nothing, yeah. let alone thinking that you tried everything. But that's what happens to them, right? So that, those are important things to, to remember because we think, oh, I don't want to sell something that somebody doesn't want. Mm -hmm. You're not. Right. They're hesitating for those reasons. The, the internal stuff, not because they don't want it or don't need it. So that's an important okay. mindset to have when you're when you're dealing with it. But we eliminate those objections up front. Location, can you get to me? You can? Okay, cool. Location works. And by the way, you always write it down. Mm -hmm. I know with today's day and age, you're doing computer, you're doing this stuff, you always I, write I, it down. I, I do because I want them to see it. You yeah. want them to see it, right. Yeah. You want them to know that what they're saying to you is important, but also when it's written down, it's committed. Yeah. Their words are committed now. Yeah. They, people will not go back So you put location, check. Location works. Location works. Or check, okay. whatever. That, same idea, yeah. right? Okay. Next, schedule. Yeah. And we're in sequence, right? Is location an easy thing to answer? Yeah. Yeah, easy. real easy. So you get an easy yes, a micro commitment, move on to the next thing. Right. Next one, schedule. That's an easy one, too. If I put a program together that is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.15, is that going to typically work for you? We might go more than that, but I am just want to get a baseline so yeah. that I can get some yeah, kind I of... Yeah, I can do that. Okay, minimum commitment, minimum yeah. type of thing. And then you can add a third or fourth day if you need to. Right. If I see that the person really killed the workout, well, we're going five days a week, man. Yeah, yeah. You, okay, you so it. start with just two because it's easy. Because... Easy right. to say yes to. You start with five and they're going, I don't know if I can do five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, start creating this anxiety. It could be just as easy as two, but because it sounds that way, they're not going to do it. Right. Okay, so they say yes, then what do you write down on the paper? Schedule works. Schedule works. And cool. then Tuesday, Friday, Thursday, whatever it is. You know? Got it. Cool. Now, we're getting to the, we're, they've answered a couple of questions for us. We're training them to answer. We're training them to, to, to participate. To, to continue checking off boxes. Right. Right. Now we're getting into the goal, the motivation and commitment part of it. Mm -hmm. This is where they're going to think, oh, I can't do it. I can't. So what have you tried in the past? Mm -hmm. Why hasn't that worked? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've, I've done like... Uh, some CrossFit and I did some like Orange Theory stuff and uh, well you mentioned on the phone that you trained previously and then you stopped mm -hmm. why did you stop um, just you know overall lost a little bit of interest um, I don't know just kind of start put more stuff in front of it yeah yeah and that's that's pretty common mm -hmm. when you say you lost interest you were putting more stuff in front of it when you started you were very interested yeah right that's why you started you wouldn't ever yep. you right. never got started what specifically caused you to lose the interest? I just don't think I was seeing the results that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was, quite, uh, honestly, if it, it felt like I was wasting some time. Sure. And uh, I don't know. I, just, I, I have kids. and Yeah, um, well, you, yeah. you don't got time to waste. Right, right. When you're there, you want to get the results. What, what about the results part of it? Why weren't you getting the results? Did the workout change? Did you, you know, not know what you were doing? Did you not have a trainer? Um, Why do you think the results weren't coming? On the fitness side, I don't know. I think I was doing everything I was supposed to do. Um, but on the nutrition side, I mean, I probably got a little lax mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, you're not you're not like certified trainer or anything like that, right? No. Okay. Because a lot of times we think we know what we're doing, mm -hmm. but we're not trained. Right. And that's why we don't get the results. We go and we push some weights around. We get on cardio. We think, oh, you know what? This is This is what we should be doing. But it's not that we know what we should be doing. We don't really know because we're not trained in that area. Right, right. Okay? So I can see why you wouldn't be getting the results. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. You're not freaking trained to do that. Right, right. Right? Right. So that does have an impact on motivation and continuing and your interest in it. So totally understand that. Okay, great. Um, anything else that you've tried? Just, no, just, I mean, then working out on my own. Yeah. yeah. Which we're going right back to the same problem. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So one thing that we've got to do with this program is we've got to address that. Right. We've got to make sure that you're in a program where you don't need to know what to do. Someone's going to help you with that. Does that make sense for you? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Now, let's talk about the goal real quick. You want to lose 15 to 20 pounds. Right. Or, no, you said 10 to 15. Yeah, 10 to 15. Okay, 10 to 15. Why? What is that going to do for you? How is that going to affect you in a positive way? Let's say you're already there. Mm -hmm. You've already accomplished it. I just feel like I'm, I'm in my late 30s mm -hmm. and... Um, that's not necessarily my late 60s, right? Yeah. So I feel like I still have a good decade or two where I can look fit and I don't want to waste them. Okay, so you want to look fit? I mean, I want to be fit. Look fit and be fit. Right. For what? Just, you know, myself. Just, you know, when I wear shirts, I want to know that I'm tighter in the chest than I am in the stomach. Okay. Marjan have any effect? You want to look good for her? Uh, like, she, loves, she loves me either way. Either way? It still feels good to know that I'm in better shape than some yeah. of the other guys around us. 
let's be honest, we want to impress our ladies even That's if they okay. say okay. they don't, right? Okay. Right. So it's part of it. That's why we want to have that look to us. I get it. I just want to see one of the things that is important to getting the right program is understanding why we want the program. Mm -hmm. Like you want to lose 10, 15 pounds, cool, but why do we want to do that? Right. We want to do that for certain things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those certain things are significant others. We'd like to say they're internal, but ultimately it's about people looking at us, right? Right. right. So I get it. And, and, and um, that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It helps with our motivation and, and that's important. Okay. Now on the flip side of that, we also got to understand what we don't want, right? Mm -hmm. We got to understand where we're at right now. You're a little bit heavier. You're not feeling as good about yourself. I don't want to put words in your mouth though, so don't let me do that. What, how do you feel that this is a problem for you right now or could be a problem? Well, later? it's a pattern, you know, uh, Two months ago, I was maybe eight to ten pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. Now I'm ten to fifteen pounds overweight. So, so what happens? Three if months the pattern continues. Yeah. yeah, I think you know, keeps going. Yeah. Well, what happens? Does that? It's yeah, twenty to thirty pounds. I get further and further away from who I know I could be. Yeah, and who cares? Look, everybody's overweight. Two thirds of the population's overweight. Yeah. Why do you care so much about being overweight? How is that affecting you in a negative way? In other words. Um. Do you feel? I, I got to start dressing a way I don't want to dress. I got to start doing things that I don't want to do or not doing things that I actually want to do. More, you know, self-conscious mm -hmm. in the pool, that kind of stuff. So people are looking at you. You're feeling mm -hmm. a little insecure about yourself. Yep. That kind of a thing. Yep. Okay, great. Not great. It's not a great feeling, no. but great that we have an understanding about why that's important to you. Mm -hmm. And I get it. And one thing that I want to mention to you here too is that, you know, a lot of people won't do something about it. Like I said, two thirds of the population's overweight and out of shape. Yeah. They're doing nothing about it, right? So you're here, you've created some positive momentum by actually doing something about mm -hmm. it, all right? So I want to encourage you to continue doing that. You're doing the right thing, all right? Now, let's talk about uh, Marjan. Mm -hmm. Is she against you being here? She not supportive of this in any way? No, I mean, I told her I was coming here and she said, you know, good, have fun and let me know how it goes. Okay, awesome. So if you go home tonight mm -hmm. and you say, hey, Marjana decided to become a, a, a member of Name Fitness and handle this weight that I've been trying to lose and, mm -hmm. and been gaining over a little while, she's gonna be your biggest cheerleader. I could, yeah, I could see her. You could see her cheer me on. in yep. the cheerleading outfit with the pom-poms, the whole nine, <laughs> right? Yeah, probably. Okay, okay, awesome. Well, good deal. So we'll have you get into your workout, okay? Don't, don't be Superman. I know you worked out before, but take it at a pace that, that works for you. You don't have to worry about uh, crushing goals today. Mm -hmm. Just evaluate and, and see what you think and, and see if you like it and see if you can enjoy the workout. That's really what we're going for today. So. Do that and um, have fun, okay? Okay. And then we go into the workout. Yes. That was good. You dug a little more than uh, I hear most fitness studio owners right. dig and salespeople dig. But that was good because, you know, it made me feel... You had to really think, like... Well, it made you're me... Trying to, you're trying to role play, so... You know what it made me do? I, I, was, I was wanting to articulate what I was feeling. I don't even know what I was feeling, but it made me feel, period. Right. Because it, it, it was all... Uh, rationale first. You know, what am I here for? What am I doing? 10 to 15. Where do I go? Where am I supposed to be? But I wasn't feeling any of the things that you were bringing out of me, which is, you know, how, how I feel with my shirts, how I feel with Marjan. Like, none of that yeah. was in my head. Because I, I, when I was role playing, I'm really being that guy. Right, right. right. And uh, so you made me feel, you made me shift feelings to maybe being nervous about where I'm at and thinking about getting all my head to getting. Where's this going? What's going to happen? Not to quote Drake, but getting all in my feelings. <laughs> McKenna loves that. Word. That's it. <laughs> That's what it is, man. Yeah. Drake, I, he took that from me. You, you know what I mean? The art, of, the art of selling Drake. <laughs> right. All right. So, so now I go through my workout. Before that, let me point something out. Yep. What did I do at the end? Did I say, do you have any questions have for me? No, no. Did no. I say, when you're done with your workout? We'll come back and I'll, tell, I'll go over some membership options. Yeah, no. Did I say I'm going to try to sell you? Did I give you any anxiety no. about coming back and seeing me? Go out and have fun. Right. That's what I want. Right. I don't want them thinking, when you're done, time to put you in the corner. Mm -hmm. Because here's what's going to happen.
They're going to get done with that workout, and boom, they're gone. Yeah. They're like, what happened? Where'd they go? Right. Right? They left, or they're going to they're gonna be thinking about it the whole time. What am I going to tell this guy at the end? I got to go to work. I got to... Wait, you told me that we work days. What do you mean you got to go to work? <laughs> well, uh, I, I took on an extra in. shift. Yeah, I got <laughs> called in during the workout, right? Yeah. So you don't want to create that anxiety. You don't want to create that tension there. Kay. Go have fun, man. Okay, cool. Okay? And evaluate it. So now after that workout happens, though, now... Are you waiting for them? Yeah, um, okay. I'm there, I'm around, and kind of hovering, if you want to call it that, but I'm kind of seeing what's going on, where are they at with stuff, right? Workout ends, the coach, the trainer, whoever's doing the workout, if it's not me, right? I'm getting the coach involved. And one thing I always want the coach to say, and the trainer to say, is that this person would be a great member. I don't care about anything else, unless they really won't be. Right, if they really won't be, they're out, right? I mean, there's, I don't know what, what would cause that. Maybe they're a complete a-hole, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, yeah. right? But most of the time they would be a great member. So I want the, the coach to confirm that because what's happening is they may have struggled a little bit, right? Coach, how'd Mike do? Well, he, it was a little tough for him, but he, did, he really did good. It was mm -hmm. for his first workout back and, and all that, he did great. He's gonna be a great member here. The, the, the coach, the guru, just gave their blessing. Right. And now you're feeling like, oh, my God, I got the approval. <laughs> I can be, I can do it, right? Yeah. They're going to be a great member here. So, so I the want, coaches are trained. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and that's not a lot of training to do. Yeah, that's very easy. Make sure you tell them they're going to be a great member. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Anything else you say, I don't care, right? <laughs> you're a complete idiot, but you're going to be a great member. It, <laughs> you're going to fit in just fine. You're going to fit in just fine with the rest <laughs> of our idiots here, right? So the bottom line is you are going to be a great member is what I want my coaches to say. Okay. Because it really does have a great feeling to hear that from somebody who you look at as an expert. Right. You would expect a salesperson to say this to you. Right, but the coach is in a different box. Totally different. Okay. They're, they're, they're a trainer. Right. They're, they're the, like I said, they're like the guru. They're, they're giving you the real deal. Right, right, right. Salespeople don't always give you the real deal. Right. right? Our process is, has integrity and, and, and honesty involved in it, but they're not used to that. So that's why they have a different perception yeah. of us a little bit. Yeah. So that's an important thing to do. Once that's done, Mike, so awesome job. Um, what do you think of the workout? Yeah, it was fun. Great, great. And that's one of the things we're looking for, right? Make yeah. sure it's fun. So if I could show you a membership option that's affordable, fits in your budget, and by the way, you got a free week coming, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that free week and I'm going to include it in your membership. So you're still going to get it. But if I can show you a membership option that's affordable and fits in your budget, would you like to take advantage of it tonight? Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Okay, great. Do you have your payment info on you or is it in your car? Um, it's, uh, it's in my locker. Okay, go grab that, meet me over at the desk, and we'll go over a, a membership option for you. Okay, cool. Go get it. Go get Come it. back. Now we sit down, and here's... Now, just so you know, I'm in sales. I've learned challengers and being politely aggressive is actually a really, really strong asset in the sales game. Mm -hmm. People that are not as aggressive or people that are more passive or scared or timid, salespeople, I mean... They're going to have a hard time with what you just said. Go right. get your payment info and come back. Oh, yeah. Okay. All I need to hear from you is that you've had many clients that you've ha told to do this, test this, and it just works. 100%. All yes. 100%. Okay. So everyone listening I, I have and everyone watching, like, it works, guys. If you haven't tested it, don't tell us it's not going to work. He's tested it. It works. I'm assuming it's in your book. All over the place. Yeah. All, when I tested it all over the place, in, mo in one very recent... What's the worst you get from somebody, from you telling somebody, go get your payment and follow me to the desk? What's the worst thing you've gotten? Nothing. What do you mean the worst thing? There's no worst thing. You well, either got it on you or it's in your car. Because you know the worst thing someone thinks is going to happen is, oh, I, I mean, I'm not committing to anything. I'm not buying You already anything. did. Yeah. <laughs> you already did. That's why I can ask. Yeah. You said if it's affordable and fits in my budget, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, guess what the next step is? <laughs> paying for it. Right. So you got to have that on you. I don't want to wait and then they start feeling their pockets I when it. I show them price. Oh, uh, where's my credit it. card? Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot to bring it. Uh, can I get you in the next one? It's again, it's not that they don't want to buy. It's there's some hesitation there. Now, and that and, and that's also because of sequence because you could lose that sale by having them think about it on their way to the car or do whatever. Whereas right now the sequence was what made that work. Right. And here's the thing. If they if I'm not narrowing this down, I don't know if it's true. 
I don't know if they really don't have their payment info on. If you wanted me to bet, and I'm a gambler, I will bet they do, and they're telling you they don't. Buyers are liars. Right. It's time to buy. Right. You're a salesperson. I have full permission to lie to you because mm -hmm. you are in sales. Right. Right. And so that's what happens. We hesitate. We're nervous about making that decision. So wh what's the only out I got so far with this guy? He took care of every freaking objection I can right. think of. Spouse, at schedule. At this point, lying's my only way At out. this point, I don't have my damn right. credit card, right? And you can see it in their pocket. You know, it's <laughs> okay. sticking out or whatever. So, so they come so, back. I come back. To, oh, go ahead. Hold on real quick. So I want to just emphasize one thing. When you ask for the payment info, it, it you've already said that you're going to buy if it's affordable and, and it fits in your budget. Yes, I'm going to do that. Okay, awesome. I got a yes. And I got a commitment. A mini one. It's a micro commitment. Right. Right. A mini one, but hey, if it's affordable, why wouldn't I do it? Right. This place was awesome. I loved it. I loved the experience. Okay, excellent. Now, do you have your payment info on you or is it in your car? It. Everybody in the beginning who is like what you were describing, they're a little nervous about asking that. And I had a couple of clients um, specific that I, I'm picturing right now, and they said, hey, I'm really uncomfortable asking that. That's interesting. Do it anyway, okay? Do it anyway. You hired me to teach you how to do this right. Just listen to me, yeah. And then watch what happens, right? I'm sure. I'm sure they're not as uncomfortable as the people that they're asking to do 50 burpees. Right. In that's front the of whole strangers. thing. That's interesting, right? But, these were trainers, salespeople. Right, 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 right. But they, but they say you have to do it. You have to get outside of your comfort zone, and we'll get you results. Right. Same goes for business. Same exact thing. And so these two report back to me. This is, just, you know, as as mm -hmm. we're going along. And what they found was people weren't even batting an eye at it. It wasn't even a hiccup in the game. But what happens is when you actually do it, now there's a psychological commitment to purchase. Mm -hmm. They're already almost 99% there, man. Mm -hmm. They said yes to buying, and they said yes to having payment info. Right. I'm psychologically there. We're here. You really got to mess up now, man. You yeah. really got to screw it up, right? So. That's a key thing to ask. Watch what happens when you don't do it versus when you do. Test it out. I've had clients have that happen to, mm -hmm. right? They were doing it right. You know, you start to go hum along. You, you forget a couple things here and there. This guy had three in a row this week that said they didn't have their payment info on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, let's let's talk about what's happening right after they're done working out. Right, right, right. So, so okay, cool. Makes total sense. I walk back to you. I sit down. I got you know I got my payment info because that's right. where I went. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now we're presenting what our recommendation is. Okay. This is where I differ significantly from a lot of places um, because I don't present price options. I don't present anything except the program that I recommend because I'm the expert, I'm the pro, I know what you need to be doing. So I'm going to recommend this specific program. The other thing is I've been telling you I was going to do this from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So now if I don't do it, right. what's that saying about my integrity? It's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. Right. And, and we were talking about not knowing what's throwing me off with somebody, not knowing what it is about right. this guy I don't like. Inconsistency. That's one of those things. Incongruent yeah. inconsistency. That creates lack of certainty. And they couldn't even tell you why they don't like you. Well, and, and there's really, you know, it's, it's funny. You sum it up in four, but you can categorize some of them in two. There's two re we always put there's two reasons that people don't buy it. They're not the decision maker or they're not certain it's going to work like a legitimate reason, right? And, and e even if they're not the decision maker, you can overcome that. It's mm -hmm. just it's at least legitimate if they're not here right now and they got this weird relationship where you can't do that. Right. But they're not certain it'll work. It'll mean it won't work with my schedule. It's not going to work for me. It's not, right? And so, but the lack of certainty is going to get created from little things like that, inconsistency, incongruence, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And so you got to make sure you're not, that's not happening. Right. Okay, so you show me this one option, so, so present it to me, whatever here's it is. what's going on. This is the program that I recommend. This, and, and then I have all the reasons and all the things they're getting in this program, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Access, trainers, let's classes, Let's say it's unlimited. Let's everything. say the one you're recommending is an unlimited program. I don't like unlimited either. Oh, you don't like unlimited? No, I don't like unlimited because it limits you. Okay. I know it sounds weird, right? Unlimited limit. I want to be able to charge for things as I offer them. Maybe I'm going to up, I'm going to have an upgrade program later. And now I got someone in Unlimited, I can't upgrade them. So it limits you to be able to upgrade them. Uh, yeah, but right. why wouldn't you just want to upgrade them to the biggest thing right away and get that get that cash right up front? I will. That is what I want to do. 
but it's not unlimited. It's six days a week. Okay. It's five days a week. It's okay. whatever it is, specific, okay. right. up to five days a week, up to six days a week, whatever okay. that might be. I don't want to be unlimited, though, because I don't want them, if I do a special class that costs extra, what's the conversation you're going to have with unlimited? Mm -hmm. Well, I know you bought unlimited, but this is, this is a extra class and now got I got it. a negative touch point in my business that I don't want got it. Okay. Right? or a negative conversation I that I don't saying. want. Okay? okay. So that's why it's a philosophy thing. Is it going to make or break sales? No. Right. Right. Um, and the fact is nobody uses unlimited. Mm -hmm. They use a certain amount. Right. Right. So you're being true to what you're actually offering anyway. Right. right? Okay. So bottom line is here's the program. Okay. These are the benefits. This is what you get with that program. These number of classes, this is how long they are, this is the nutrition. Why is this nutrition important? Because it's not going to help you, not just going to help you in the workout, but it's going to help you throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Burn cat. So we're, we're talking about what the program is, and this is why I recommend it okay. specifically for you. I've got to give the reason why I'm recommending it, because if I don't, they're going to feel like I'm just showing them the most expensive. Okay. Now, the fact that the, the program I'm showing them is the best one and the one that's going to work for them just so happens to be the most expensive is irrelevant. I want them to understand I'm showing them something that is a program-based thing. People get results from what? The program or the amount of money they're paying? The program. Right. Right. So that's what I want a decision made on. Right. Not on price. Right. So does this program sound like the program that makes sense for you? Yep. Guess what I got? A commitment to program now. Right. So you're committed to saying yes, it's affordable. You're committed to uh, paying for it. And you're committed to the program. The only thing we got left now is to show you actually how much it is. And now they're not options there. I'm directing the whole thing. I'm taking control of the whole thing. How, how long would you say from the moment you start talking, presenting the program, to the moment you're done talking, right before you jump into price? How, how long would you say you're doing? 30 seconds, minute. 30 seconds to a minute. It's not okay. long at all. Okay, because I just, well, because you say why it's important. I don't want people to go off tangent and now they're t talking for five minutes about the science of no, 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 all no, that no. stuff. It's here's what it is and here's why that means something to you. Okay. Uh, do I want to get into the metab metabolic no. da 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 of the nutrition no. program? And I no. know, but I wanted to make sure the listeners, when you say right. why, they don't get into all the how. Right. Because that's gonna that's gonna lo lose the sale. Right. You're not certifying them as a personal trainer right now. Right. 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 Got exactly. It. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Them, this is the nutrition plan, and this is why mm -hmm. this is something. This means something. I to talked you. to a five year old. Nutrition These are the means nothing to me. Right. The vegetables because it makes you nice and big and strong. Right. You need to go to sleep so you can wake up nice and pretty. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, exactly. So that's get, it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Real and simple. so that's done. And then I say why I recommend it right. because you came in. And I know you said two days a week. But you crushed the workout, you've had experience before, and that's why I'm recommending actually five days a week because I also want to get you in a routine so that's consistent and so that you're getting the results that you want over time. Does that sound like it makes sense to you and yep. sound like the right program? Yeah. Awesome. Great. So let me show you how much the program is. It's $2,400 for the whole year, okay? I always show the total number of what it's going to cost because whatever that number is, the initial payment is going to be lower. Yeah. And I do that because if I just show the initial payment, that's the big number now. Mm -hmm. When I show $2,400 and all you have to do is an initial payment of 200, that 200 now looks like an easy number compared to 2,400. Right. And it looks like I'm getting $2,400 worth of something for only two. Right, you're breaking it up. Right, so there's a I little bit of psychological. I actually have a studio that would do something like that where, you know how, how normally people would say like, uh, hey, if I pay in full, would it be cheaper? Most people say, can I break it up in payments too? Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, that's a lot. Can I break it up in payments? What he actually did was he would do it in a year. He would say, yeah, so this example, it's $2,400 for the year. You can pay in full or you can just pay $200 for the month, uh, per month. Right. And now they do the math. I'm like, oh, wow, I don't even pay more or I don't get it. Like it's the same. Yeah. Why would I even pay for the year? I'll just pay for the month. So the decision shifts from should I do it to should I not do or uh, should I do it or should I not do it to should I do a year or should I do a monthly? Well, monthly sounds way better. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing, too. That, create, that can create a problem. Okay. Why? Let me think about it. I don't know whether I want to do monthly or, or whether I want to pay for the year. So get back to me tomorrow. Let me think about it. Let me think about which one I want to do, and then I'll, okay. I'll let you know. Okay. So how do you handle it? Well, it's the same thing if you pay monthly or yearly. The only, if, you, if you decide you want to pay yearly, we just go ahead and pay it off in the next session. Yeah, but I think I probably do want you're, to do yearly. You're right. It's a lack of certainty that creates discomfort, which creates a loss of sale. Yeah, and, and if you give me an out mm -hmm. to hesitate, 
sometimes I'm going to take it. So tell me your, your so, so 2400 2400 mm -hmm. Your initial installment's just 200 bucks, and then it's 200 bucks a month, right? Is that affordable for you? Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay, great. How'd you want to pay for it? Yeah, I already got it. Credit card? Okay, <laughs> awesome. I got a commitment. Right. I don't have a choice here. I got a commitment. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. Now, quick question, Mike. Before I run this payment, I just thought of this. If I can show you an option that saves you $480 on the same membership, do you want to take a look at that? Yeah. You know how many people say no? <laughs> None. Yeah. No, no one says no. Yeah. Sometimes you get the question of, uh, well, what's the catch? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm getting the same thing for $480. What the, what the yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Right? Everybody says yes. Well, let me show you how it works. Here's what we call our paid full option. So instead of making 11 installments of 200 bucks, you make one of $19.99. And you save $400 in doing that. Is that something that you want to do? Smart. Smart. But tell me you want to think about it. That's why this guy wrote the book. Right. That's why this guy wrote the book. Well, give me the objection. You want to think about it. I got nothing. It. I got nothing. Just say you want to think about I it. I want to think about it. I don't know whether I want to do paid in full or not. I think I kind of do, but let me think about it. Let me ask you, how long you need to think? A uh, day or two. Day or two? Two days. How about if I give you three days to think about it? Yeah. You're thinking this guy's the worst salesperson in the history because <laughs> he just had a sale and now he's letting me think about it for three freaking days. Yeah. Perfect. I'll give you three days to think about it. Here's what I'm going to do. If you decide you want to take advantage of the paid in full, let me know and I'll take that initial payment that you're paying right now off uh -huh. the paid in full and you'll still get the cash discount. Sound fair? So I'll take the, pay I'll take the payment that I'm making right now. Yeah. Does that sound fair to you? Yes. Right? You will get compliments on how great you are at sales. I'm telling you, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel combative. It doesn't feel awkward. There's a flow to it. You, you know what the funny thing is? You know what you actually look seem like? More of a professional in your space. That's how a doctor would perform. That's how a dentist would perform. That's how an attorney would perform versus somebody that is really all about fitness and cared about people and doing the right thing. And if yeah. I make money along the way, it's great. And it's like, that's fine if you're an employee somewhere. Yeah. But if you started a business, you have responsibilities. At this point, there's people counting on you to grow this thing. You are, a, you are running a business. And then it's great if you change lives along the way, but this is a commitment. You've got you've to do this. Yes. And we hear all the time, oh, I hate salespeople. Or, people hate bad salespeople. That's what they hate. That's what they hate. Yeah. They don't hate helpful salespeople that help them make a good decision. Mm -hmm. Nobody hates that. Right. They love that. Right. You get compliments on that. You get referrals from that. Right. You don't you don't get it if you're bad, if you're rah rah on people into buying something, if you're strong arming people into buying something. This person has to come back. The other thing is, when you go home, you are not going to feel buyer's remorse, which happens a lot of times when somebody makes gets pushed a little bit to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Well, I got three days to cancel this contract. Anywhere in the US, you got three days to cancel without having to do anything. They gotta refund you. Yeah. It's law. Yeah. They go home, oh, that guy kind of pressured me, felt weird. You know what? I'm canceling. Mm -hmm. I'm just canceling. I don't like that vibe. You know, and, and what's really going on? Maybe they're feeling insecure about doing the workout, about sticking with it, and they're going to blame it on you for putting pressure on them and looking for that out, and they found it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen with this because it just feels like it feels good. Mm -hmm. It feels like I did the right thing, not that I got pressured to do anything. Right, right. right? And, and, that's what professional sales is all about. Yeah, yeah. You know? I love it, man. That was really good. And, you know, it sucks because obviously this is the type of conversation I feel like you and I, we can talk about for the next six hours. Yeah, totally. And not repeat ourselves, <laughs> which is interesting. And be totally interested in it. And be for, totally yeah, interested in it. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, but I do want to wrap up because... I feel like we've get, given our listeners some really good stuff, and I think if I ever wanted you back on the show, we can always <laughs> do some more stuff, oh, yeah. uh, which I'd love to actually have you back. Um, but also, for anybody that was you know, tuning in today, um, his book, The Art of Selling Memberships, I mean, you, you cover all this stuff and more, yeah, like way more, absolutely. different scripts. And then also, if you go to loudermervt.com, you can actually get, um, we just spent like three hours while you were here. We did some really in-depth Shooting, training, yeah. I mean, a lot of what we talked about, but a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And and so you guys can get access. If you like this, we're talking three hours of training, so we can really, really dig into it. 
and um, and then you got the book and all that stuff. So go to sure. loudrumorvt.com. And how else can people get a hold of you? Um, that's good, man. Just that's good. just just contact you guys. Yep, yep. Facilitate it through that. I think that'd probably be the best. And um, I love working with you guys, and it's it's always a, a good experience. And I love hearing the results from clients when they get a chance to implement some of this stuff. <laughs> it's great, man. I love hearing it. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons I love recommending you is because I feel like it does better for our business. Absolutely. It makes us better by recommending you. So, uh, yeah, so if, if you guys want to know more about Eric, um, just go ahead and you can actually, in the show notes page, we'll have some links. So you can just go to the, GS, uh, the gsdshow.com, uh, look for his episode. You'll, we'll have everything in the show notes page. And... Um, and, and they'll have an option to get the book too. You know what? The option to get the book and all put, that. Put a link on there. Anybody who takes advantage of that link, I'll send them the book for You'll, free. They pay the shipping and we'll hook them up How, with the book. How what, about you, that? what do you sell? What would I have? To, what would I pay for this normally? Twenty bucks. Dude, there you go. You already got twenty bucks. All right, he already Look made you twenty dollars. There you go. And, and, and this book's <laughs> going to make you more than twenty dollars anyway. For so. sure. Hey, Eric, man, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything. You You're know, welcome. we spent the second half of the day together, and it was a pleasure. I know you got to fly back to New York. Yeah. So thanks for making the trip. Thank you for having me. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. For everybody that tuned in, thanks so much, and we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. And to watch more episodes and get exclusive links from each episode, go to gsdshow.com. Again, that's gsdshow.com.